Now joining us, former RNC chairman and co-host of the show The Weekend on MSNBC, Michael Steele. Michael, it's been a while. It's good to have you. You're so busy nowadays. I don't get to book you on this show as much as I used to. Oh, no, it's good to, it's good to be with Katie. Good. I'm happy to have you. Um, I'm going to let you choose. Do you want to talk about abortion or do you want to talk about impeachment? Let's talk about both because they do intersect, actually, um, in a very difficult way for, for my party. On abortion, uh, this narrative uh, that somehow let's lean into it and talk about it more. Okay, so what is the message? What is the thread that you're going to weave throughout um, the, the candidates that are going to be running up and down the ballot? So there's a consistency. Are you trying to frame it uh, in a way that's uh, essentially essentially around life. Okay, that's good, important. But then, what about all these other ancillary pieces, IVF, and and of course, uh, the impact that states are uh, imposing on women, um, either legally or otherwise, that makes this conversation explode. So, are, have you thought that through? And the answer is no. That's why. In uh, Julia's reporting, you had the sort of trepidation that that you see among Republicans uh, really concerned about using that to lean into. On on the other side, on the impeachment, the White House, good smart political stroke. You know, it's like, oh, I'll have my counsel just send you a little. You are you guys done yet? Are, are you done? Because there's there's nothing here. Just let us know. We're ready to move on. How about? You? Um, and it again just shows up uh, just how the House right now is being run, um, that it is running. It, it, they wish they were running on empty. There's nothing in the tank. Uh, there's no there's no fumes that they can really generate around impeachment to even justify going to the next step. So um, all in all, I think this has probably been an interesting, if not a good week, for the Biden uh, operations, both in the White House as well as the campaign, in how these narratives for Republicans are setting themselves up for what will be uh, a tenacious general election. Let me put up the um, A swing state poll, this one from Michigan, from Quinnipiac. 66% think abortion should be legal in either or most cases, either all or most cases. 28% think abortion should be illegal in either most or all cases. I do think it's interesting that Lindsey Graham is not putting up his national uh, abortion ban bill for the first time this year. Um, and then there's there's all this talk that, that Dasha Burns brought us, all this reporting about how Donald Trump is asking folks at Mar-a-Lago who his VP should be, and they're all saying, don't pick somebody who's extreme on abortion. You got to pick someone who's going to moderate this. Like, don't pick somebody like Tim Scott. It seems like, I mean, I'm not sure if he's listening. But it seems like the, the Mar-a-Lago diners have their, their finger on the pulse of something. They do. And, and, and what's important about that 66% and what's important about national polling on abortion that We have show, that, too. We're going to put it up. Uh, oh, great. Because uh, it's important for people to understand the number. That number is not just a reflection of Democrats and progressives and those who support abortion access and rights. That's a lot of Republicans. Um, and, and, I, and I think Kansas and Oklahoma uh, and other places have already shown that within, within and among Republicans, this issue is toxic. Republican women are thinking about not just themselves, but their daughters and their granddaughters, recognizing that a right that they fought for, many of them, don't get, don't get stupid on that. There were a lot of Republican women fighting for that right um, to access abortion care. They're now seeing that right taken from not them so much as it is from their daughters and granddaughters. And what does that America look like for them? Um, Particularly when you have states regulating and, and really taking draconian action that women are having to leave their homes, their families, and their communities to access that health care. That's a lot of women, um, and that's a lot of Republic women. So it is a complete, and I think deep misreading, Katie, inside the GOP by the white men in the party. Do you think that there's any possibility that, that Texas changes with this? Texas has had the most extreme abortion laws, and we've had a number of women in Texas who have been very public about the struggles that they've had in getting an abortion, even when their child, which they wanted, 
was not viable, put to the point of, of them having to risk death or their future ability to have children before they were able to, to get an abortion. Um, Ted Cruz is up for re-election. Yep. Is there any chance that something might happen in Texas? It happens when the voters take out someone like Ted Cruz, and when they start removing the obstacles to their choice, the obstacle to their right that was a constitutional right up until last year. So I think, you know, that's how the paradigm change, changes. And I can, I can sh share with you and just tell you, there is internal polling, not so much in Texas, but in other states in which this issue is very vulnerable for incumbents. Keep in mind, abortion may play differently in a congressional race. In a statewide race, it is toxic as hell. Hmm. And, and that's where you're seeing that trepidation among Republicans in state who are running for U.S. Senate, running for governorships, et cetera, because statewide, everybody gets to vote. Congressional, um, you can have a gerrymandered congressional district in which you're okay on that issue. It's not going to bite you the same way. But when you move from Congress and you want to run for the U.S. Senate, now you got to take into account the other side of the state that isn't as hot red as where you're from. And that's where you're seeing a lot of the blowback and the pressure. So in a state like Texas, it plays, it can play a little bit more hot than it may be in a congressional race. And it'll be up to Texans to decide do you like living in a world in which your daughter has to seek abortion care and, and, and reproductive health outside of your state? Oh, and when she does, she could pay a penalty by being arrested when she comes back for having done that. All That's right. a real big question for a lot of women and, it is, it and is mothers a big question. out there. Ted Cruz wouldn't necessarily change that in the state of, of, of Texas because he's, you know, a federal elected official or somebody in that position. But his loss would have ramifications. Yeah, definitely. On that issue. Let, yes. me, let me ask you about, I want to take you home for a second. I want to bring you to the RNC. Lots of changes yeah. at the RNC. We've yes. been talking about them closing the community outreach centers, which have been reaching out to, to minority voters. Weird at this particular moment, because it seems like if there was any moment where um, black men and Latino men were squishy for Democrats, this is the time. And then secondly, installing Christina Bob on election integrity, uh, putting Lara Trump in there, putting Watley in there, either firing or reassigning or forcing to reapply a number of staffers. What's happening at the RNC and is it a big deal? It's a big deal if you are running as a down ballot candidate. Uh, it's a big deal if you're trying to, um, uh, you know, create a lane in which um, these issues like election integrity actually is not an oxymoron, but there is actual integrity involved in that process. Uh, yeah, it's a big deal. Um, you can see what, what they've done and what they are, in, are doing. This is the emasculation. Uh, I call it actual decapitation of the Republican Party as I once knew it, as I once led it. Uh, a lot of the efforts that we put in place, uh, Katie, you know from covering uh, back in 2010, um, led to a lot of races that we other not, otherwise wouldn't have won, right? And, and, and that's because we had boots on the ground in communities. We had community activists actually representing and being the face of the party. So we could win those, for the first time, uh, two black judges to the uh, Texas uh, Supreme Court. We could win uh, a, a governorship in New Mexico or in, in uh, New Jersey. So the reality of it is when you take all of that infrastructure and throw it away because the guy at the top, the titular head of the party, wants it to be all about him, your game plan isn't to really win elections. I don't know how Senate and congressional candidates, they're going to have to rely a lot on the NRSC and the NRCC, the congressional and senatorial committees, uh, to get through and across the, the finish line because the RNC is going to be a wasteland. Um, trust me, those dollars, and they, they showed you what they wanted to do with the money when they defeated the resolution that would require the RNC not to spend their money on Donald Trump's legal problems. To they killed that resolution. That tells you everything you need to know about where the money's going to go and what the action plan is going to be. To quote uh, Mitch McConnell, candidate quality, uh, Michael Steele. Michael. It matters. Thank you very much.